The casting for the 1972 TV series Banaszek was a careful process. George Papar was chosen for the lead role of Thomas Banaszek because of his strong screen presence and ability to carry the show as a smart, independent investigator. The producers wanted someone who could bring charm and wit to the character, making him likable and clever. For the role of Jay Drury, Ralph Monza was selected due to his ability to provide comic relief and his chemistry with Papar. The auditions were thorough, with actors reading multiple scenes to ensure they fit the roles perfectly. Chemistry tests were crucial, especially for the recurring cast, to ensure a dynamic and engaging interaction between characters. Key moments in the casting process included screen tests where the actors' abilities to portray the cleverness and humor of the series were evaluated. The final cast brought together a group of actors who could effectively bring the show's mix of mystery and humor to life. I expect to. You mean, boss? The director of the 1972 TV series Banaszek used a straightforward approach to bring the detective story to life. They were inspired by classic mystery films and aimed for a clear, easy-to-follow style. The director worked closely with the actors to help them understand their roles and with the crew to create a setting that felt real and engaging. They encouraged everyone to share ideas to make the show better. This teamwork made the show enjoyable and kept viewers guessing until the end. The director's leadership was key to making Banaszek a success. Banaszek is a classic TV series from 1972 about Thomas Banaszek, a smart and wealthy Polish-American detective. He solves impossible thefts and gets paid big rewards for it. The show is full of clever tricks, surprising turns, and sometimes it can be quite funny or even a bit sad. For many, a scene that sticks out is when Banaszek reveals how a football player vanished during a live game. It's clever and makes you think, how did I not see that? This moment, like many others in the show, stays with you because it's so smart. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Banaszek? Maybe it's a scene that you still talk about or a time when you watch the show with someone special. Share your stories and memories with us in the comments. We're excited to read about what moments from Banaszek have stayed with you. Hi there. <laughs> The 1972 TV series Banaszek had a unique set design that often used real locations in Boston and Los Angeles to give a true-to-life feel. The production team faced challenges like managing crowds and filming in busy city areas. They used innovative camera techniques for that time, such as handheld cameras for dynamic shots. They also employed early forms of mobile lighting rigs to handle the varying light conditions of on-location shoots. These methods helped create a realistic and engaging visual style that stood out for television during the early 1970s. Quite the percentage player, isn't he? Huh? Banaszek is a television series that started in 1972. It is about Thomas Banaszek, a clever Polish-American detective in Boston. He solves mysterious crimes that others find too hard. The show is set in the early 1970s and shows many places in Boston. Banaszek is smart and often outsmarts other people to solve cases. He drives fancy cars and has a good sense of humor. The show was part of the NBC mystery movie series. It was popular and is still liked by many people today. Banaszek is known for its interesting stories and the main character's clever ways of solving crimes. Surely someone would have noticed. I tell you, I don't know how he disappeared. I only know I rushed on stage. And the music for the 1972 TV series Banaszek was crafted to fit the show's unique style. The score, created by Billy Goldenberg, supports the show's detective theme with a mix of jazz and classical elements. It sets the mood for the mystery and the smart moves of the main character, Thomas Banaszek. The soundtrack uses instruments like piano and brass to give a feel of both action and thoughtfulness. The music plays a key role in making the scenes more powerful and helping viewers understand the feelings in the story. The composers and musicians worked closely to make sure the music told the story just as much as the actors and the script. He owns nearly everything for miles in all directions. Except this airport, and he's not getting it. In a notable episode, George Papar's character meets a woman played by Margaret Kidder, 
who would later be known for her role as Lois Lane. Her comment on his single name introduction foreshadows her future iconic role. The show marked Papar's first lead in a Universal television series, setting the stage for his later work on the team. Additionally, a detail often overlooked is the unique license plate number of J. Drury's limousine, which reads 175 and 43, adding a touch of specificity to the character's luxurious lifestyle. I've never seen anyone vacuum a lobster the way you do. The 1972 TV series Banaschek had several memorable scenes that stood out for their direction, acting, and camera work. One such scene is where Banaschek reveals how a theft was done. The camera closely follows the characters, making viewers feel like they are part of the action. The actors deliver their lines with clarity and confidence, which helps the audience understand the cleverness of Banaschek's methods. The filmmakers shared that they aimed to make each scene feel like a puzzle coming together which is why they focused on clear, steady shots that emphasize the actor's expressions and the unfolding mystery. This approach made the audience feel the satisfaction of solving the case alongside Banaschek. The actors have mentioned that they enjoyed bringing these moments to life as it allowed them to showcase their skills in portraying intelligence and wit. These scenes are remembered for making the viewers think and for the smart way they were put together on screen. It's what Tyson pays his taxes for. But since I arranged for him to pay so little, maybe he... In the classic detective series, the lead character's home features a driveway that viewers might recognize from a famous heist film. Off screen, the actor had a taste for fine cigars, specifically panetless from a well-known New York club, which became an on-screen detail for his character. However, these were distinct from the ones he later smoked on a popular action show, being noticeably slimmer and shorter. This preference for specific cigars added a touch of personal style to the character's sophisticated image. Well, I'll drive you. I don't need a babysitter. I need to get that collection recovered. The television series Banaschek, which aired in 1972, had a significant effect on audiences and popular culture. It featured a smart, wealthy Polish-American detective who solved seemingly impossible thefts. This show was one of the first to have a Polish-American lead character which helped to bring attention to this community. It also showed a different side of detective work, focusing on brain over brawn. The clever puzzles and the main character's cultural background were fresh and interesting to viewers. This series also sparked conversations about the representation of different cultures in media and the importance of intelligence in solving problems. Banaschek's success paved the way for future shows with smart detectives and diverse leads. Dangerous gangsters in Chicago. I suppose 40 years can change. In the vein of classic detective series, the show was a staple of mystery lovers, sharing a slot with other detective stories of the time. It shone a light on the intellectual side of crime solving, where the main character's sharp mind and keen eye for detail were his main tools. Set in the heart of Boston, the protagonist's home was a stone's throw away from his friend's bookstore, which he visited often, making it a familiar location in many episodes. This proximity allowed for a seamless transition between personal and investigative spaces, reflecting the close-knit nature of the characters' relationships and the community. Now, in this game, we followed some of the substitutions running in, but we didn't really concentrate on the bench. Yeah. The 1972 TV series Banaschek was well-received for its clever plots and the charm of its lead, George Papar, who played Thomas Banaschek. It stood out for its unique approach to the detective genre, focusing on solving seemingly impossible thefts. The show was praised for its wit and intelligent writing. Although it did not win major awards, its success was a boost for the careers of those involved. The positive response from audiences and critics helped to establish it as a memorable show from that era. For actors and producers, such recognition often leads to more opportunities and can be a highlight in their careers. I called you at home. I didn't think you'd be in today. I thought maybe I should... In the show, the lead character drives a distinctive 1941 Packard 180. This car, with its Victoria body crafted by Darren, stands out as a symbol of elegance from a bygone era. Viewers are also treated to a glimpse of Boston's history during the opening credits. As the protagonist rows along the Charles River, the unfinished John Hancock building looms in the background. This building became infamous for its faulty windows, which would fall out, leading to it being temporarily covered in plywood and earning the nickname Plywood Skyscraper. 
Additionally, a subtle change is noticeable in the second season's opening sequence. The character swaps his usual black gloves for a pair of brown leather ones, adding a touch of variety to his signature style. During the filming of Banishak, George Papar, who played the lead role, was known for his dedication to the character. He would often stay in costume even off camera to maintain the essence of the suave detective. The show's Boston setting meant many scenes were shot on location, which brought challenges due to weather and crowds. The cast and crew worked closely, forming strong bonds. They would share meals and stories, creating a family-like atmosphere on set. This camaraderie helped them through long shooting days and complex scenes, especially when filming intricate stunts or using antique cars, which were a signature element of the show. One stupid trick, my father's done everything. He picked his sire out of a yearling sale, he brought him along, he even got him out of some bad habits. Over the course of two years, the main character's sharp detective skills led to the recovery of stolen property worth a staggering 67350000 His earnings calculated as a 10% finder's fee amounted to 6 750000 Adjusting for inflation to 2021, the total value of recovered items would be approximately 427000 with the finder's fee soaring to 42700000 Notably, certain items like the paintings initially valued at $23 million would have likely seen an increase in value beyond the standard inflation rate. Similarly, the cargo jet, once worth $7 million, would now cost between $80 and $100 million to replace. The actor behind the leading role, George Papar, was compensated handsomely for his work on the series, earning four six hundred fifty-five thousand. This figure rises to four eight hundred fifteen thousand when including his earnings from the premiere movie. It's also worth noting a correction regarding the cigars Papar smoked during the show. Contrary to earlier reports, they were Panatellas with a natural brown wrapper, differing from the possibly Lonsdales in a Majura wrapper he smoked in his later series, The Ateem. The 1972 TV series Banishek had a strong effect on later detective shows. It was one of the first to feature a Polish American lead character, which opened doors for more diverse characters on TV. The show's clever puzzles and the main character's sharp mind set a standard for mystery series that followed. Banishek also influenced how later shows portrayed private investigators, making them more intellectual and less reliant on physical action. The series is remembered for its smart writing and has fans even today. It showed that TV could offer complex stories and characters leading to more quality programs in the future. Come on, Felix, you just didn't wander in off the street. In the early 1970s, George Papar took on the role of a clever insurance investigator known for cracking the toughest of cases. While initially set to appear in a series of hour-long episodes, the show took a different turn, becoming part of a rotating series of 90-minute mysteries. This change did not alter Papar's original agreement, allowing him the flexibility to exit after two successful seasons. The show was known for its unique touch of humor, often showcasing made-up sayings attributed to Polish wisdom, though none were authentic. Interestingly, the surname of Papar's character is more commonly associated with Slovakia rather than Poland. The character, known for his sharp mind and keen observation skills, was called Thomas. Polish. A trotter, on the other hand, is pure early American. (laughs) In the early 1970s, a detective series captured the audience's attention with its clever plots and a charismatic lead. The main character, known for his sharp wit, drove a car with the phone number KL-1711, and the license plate 170344. Despite the show's success and plans for continuation, the lead actor's personal life led to an unexpected Halle tenant. His decision to leave the show amid a divorce meant that the series would not return for a third season, leaving fans to wonder about the adventures that could have been. Very tall and narrow ladder trying to reach my first edition of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. In the early 1970s, a detective show joined the NBC Wednesday mystery movie lineup, sharing the spotlight with other detective series. It stood out for its unique approach to solving crimes, focusing on the recovery of stolen insured items. The lead character, known for his sharp mind and keen observation skills, 
worked on a contingency basis, collecting a fee only if he solved the case after a set period when insurance companies would typically give up. This approach proved successful in two-thirds of the cases. As the show gained popularity, the format evolved to include more urgent cases, with insurance companies and victims seeking the detective's help immediately after a theft, offering the same reward. Behind the scenes, the lead actor took on additional responsibilities, directing several episodes, showcasing his talent both in front of and behind the camera. This series was part of a trend where shows adapted their premises for more engaging storytelling, a practice seen in other popular shows of that era. Still incredible. Still the cross of Bayon. Okay. In the show's early days, viewers looking to dive into the world of rare book collecting could reach Felix Mulholland's bookstore at the phone number 555-9903. As the series progressed, the contact number changed to 555-786, reflecting a subtle yet notable shift in the show's details. This change was consistent with the show's attention to the evolution of its characters and settings. A call in the Boston phone book. In the early 70s, a television show captured the attention of viewers with its clever mysteries and the charm of its leading man. However, behind the scenes, not everything was as smooth as the polished exterior suggested. The lead actor, George Papar, known for his role as the smart and suave detective, faced a personal tragedy during the show's run. His young son, Brad, was diagnosed with a rare disease, which deeply affected him. This personal struggle contrasted sharply with the character's image of having everything under control, highlighting the often unseen challenges people face beyond the screen. The show itself, despite its initial success, faced an untimely end after only two seasons, leaving fans wanting more of the dapper detective and his complex cases. Chance of putting a hole in some of this art. If you enjoyed the clever mysteries and the charm of Banishek, share your stories with us. How did this show touch your life or change the way you see movies and TV? Your thoughts can spark joy in others and bring back great memories. Hit like, share your favorite Banishek moment, and subscribe for more trips down memory lane. Let's keep the conversation going and the memories alive. No, nothing yet. Yes, we are bringing in Banachek. How did you...